How are you, sir? Good, good. So happy to have you on here tonight. Oh, it's such an honor. Um, yeah, I am super excited to hear everything, the good, bad, and ugly. Um, you've been doing it for 15 years, and I need to know about it. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Like, let everybody know who you are. Do a little introductory for yourself. Oh, thank you, Jordan. Appreciate it. I'm Pedro. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, now living in Queens in the Rockaways. I used to belong to a gym in Brooklyn. Shout out to them. And my previous weight loss program at that time. Yeah. So, and actually, I lost a total of 231 pounds over the course of three and a quarter years and kept 191 uh -huh. of it off for over 12 years. That's, that is remarkable. That is amazing. Thank so, you. You literally have done majority of all of our plans and if you've been on if you've been doing it for 15 years so yes <laughs> let's start with let's start from the beginning you know let us know as much as you want you know whatever you're comfortable with sure what you know at what age did you decide at what time did you decide i need to start getting this under control well it all well it was the year before i started a few months before my best friend and i where i was working at the time we had we were chilling out, going to the movies, and I remember eating a half a half a pie of pizza in less than about three minutes or so. And we had, he had a tough talk with me about getting healthy, losing weight, and what have you. But in, all of that did not click until the day after my 34th birthday, that I walked into my first meeting, my then po my then weight loss program at the time, and my then gym. Yeah. And that's actually where it all started. And I so remember eating my right. very, very last big meal at the time. It was, <laughs> it was a whole bowl of buffalo wings, a, the largest burger they had over there, french fries, and a couple of sodas or what have you. So, and, but, and I didn't, did not start to click until like a, couple of days later that I started working my then program at the time. Yeah. So how was that like? How was it walking into your first, you know, you had lost, you had lost pretty much all your weight on Weight Watchers from before. Yeah, right. But we don't, yeah. how was it walking into, how was it walking into the meeting for the first time, you know, 34 years old? I had, I had no idea of what being healthy was. I had no idea what my goal weight sh should be. I had no idea that I yeah. could do it, period. But at that time, I was also caretaking for my grandparents who both raised me, especially my late grandmother. And watching them uh -huh. go through back-to-back -back surgeries, and I was doing, and I had chosen to go to my first Weight Watchers meeting instead of doing surgery. I was supposed to have done gastric bypass surgery but after seeing this surgery being done on my late grandparents, both in the heart and the back and what have you, I was like, I refuse to do it. I yeah. just wanted to do a healthier approach. Yeah. So let's start with from the beginning as far as the, you know, the old program you were on. What, what made you keep going? Because I know we all, you know, we start fresh, you know, we're on better balance, we're on carb conscience. And we see those weight loss, you know, for the first couple of weeks, we're like, man, yes, I lost five pounds. Yes, I lost three pounds. Yeah. But like eventually, like, it, it's not that it stalls, but it kind of slows down to be that you can keep it off for the rest of your life. But how was that? Like, what was the deciding factor for you after weeks and weeks of losing weight that you were like, I can do this. I, I can, I'm going to make this work. I think it was by 2008 when I was no longer able to go to the big and tall store and i was able to shop at regular stores for the first time as far as getting clothes is concerned and believe it or not some of my clothes i have from when i when i when my total weight loss reached the 200 pound mark is still with me today really so, yep believe it or not it was such a thrill to shop at jc penny to old navy and what have you and, yeah and at that time i had so much energy being able to do two hours at the gym. I, I'm not, I wasn't a great swimmer, but I remember doing spinning classes. But then life started happening and I gained some of the weight back, gained some weight, 
return to goal, then gain some weight again, life started happening again, then return to goal mm -hmm. for the second time, and then maintain a goal for one year. And then what, what really kept me going was the pandemic. Because I gained 25 yeah. pounds during the pandemic, and like so many people who gained weight during the pandemic, were for me, especially for me, the self pity was a big issue because there's now some of the clothes are a little bit tight. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going. I'm determined to get myself back to my goal weight again. Yeah, no, I love that. Did you uh, like? How did you figure out what your goal weight was? Did you uh, did the old program tell you, or did you go to the doctor? I'm actually I spoke with my then doctor at the time and I figured that 188 was ideal goal weight. Believe it or not, my I talked to my doctor recently. My current doctor suggests that anything above anything above or below 215 is perfect for me. Because according to him, we're not looking to maintain a number, we're just looking to maintain a healthy lifestyle change. And I think even yeah, though probably main, I'm not going to yeah, no longer probably take maintain, off. yeah, maintain your uh, blood work and all all that good stuff that comes around that Absolutely. your doctor's going to look for to make sure that you're on the right. Now, how tall are you, uh, Pedro? Six feet tall, Jordan. Six feet tall. Six foot. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's awesome that he was able to tell you pretty much two fifteen. That must make you feel better as a more sustainable lifestyle for you to be like, hey. I, I can, I, I'm comfortable at that way. Absolutely. I still got 12 pounds to get there. However, my pre-pandemic weight was 203, but as long as I can fit into the clothes that, that I was able to fit to, into before the pre-pandemic -pand even started, I'm happy with it. Because at that time, yeah. 188 was very, un, very too skinny, too unrealistic, and... It, yeah. it didn't, it, were, it was fitting with my lifestyle back then, but you know, I just, I'm at peace with where my life is right now. And that is with yeah. work, helping out my aunt and her granddaughter from time to time and inspiring my family to start their own healthy lifestyle changes. So I love that. So. I love that. Pedro, so I got to ask, sure. how, how was it going from no weight loss, like no inkling that you want to lose weight from before? to start tracking everything that you were putting into your mouth. What kind of mindset shift did you have to do to be like, I need to track my food. I need to see what I'm putting in my body. I think personally for me is like, I need to know. I need to know what I'm getting, getting into good health guidelines or not. I need to know where I slipped up. I need to know what I'm, I'm on the, I'm like the moment I write it down, that's what I'm, that's what I'm honest with myself and finding out, did I do good today? Did I do good at this meal? Did I slip up? Hey, did something unexpected showed up? Did I plan for yeah. what I wanted to eat and what have you? Yeah. No, I love that. That really tracking is a tool. You know, I was talking to, uh, I've been talking to people for a couple of days, you know, that about tracking and, you know, no matter what, if we ever get to the point in our lives where we don't want to track anymore, that's the goal. Um, but you got to learn, learn the tools. You got to use and learn the tools. You've been doing it for 15 years. You've obvious, I mean, repetitively for 15 years, you know, the tools left and right. It's just, you know, yourself, you have to be able to use those tools. Absolutely. You know, you, you learn them. I think I talked one live before about like carpentry school or something like that. You know, you go to learn to build a house, you know, they're going to show you all the tools and tell you how to do it. But if you're not put it into place and building houses, <laughs> eventually you're going to forget about it. Oh, I'm still learning that. And the cooking part, too. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, well, especially so the area that you're in, um, you know, where you were living at, growing up, all that stuff. You know, it's foodie central. Like, I will say that I, I've yes. known people, you know, that are there and. It is, I mean, their Instagram fields, feeds are full of dining out in amazing restaurants. How do you, how do you work that into your plan? For me, I, I like to plan ahead because I know the, fam, the family who I live with right now loves to eat out. But for me, I, ever since I purchased my air fryer, it's like I don't eat out like that these days. Because yeah. I don't know if you know Coach Ben, but I had something similar. Before my weight loss journey, every day was fast food. 
Burger King one day, Mickey D's the next, KFC. So I'm, I don't see myself going to the King now because my body will tell me it cannot tolerate it. It cannot tolerate yeah. the Whopper. It, I do, however, plan out to have a crispy, crispy cream donut from time to time. Whenever the family <laughs> requests that I bring it home, and, and I'll plan it into my day. For me, personally, my day has to, I like to have my day, food treat day as the day after my weigh-in. That is on a Friday. Okay. So Friday, I plan out to have my food treat. And, and for me, I love to have the pizza, and I like to go local when I eat out. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah, a couple of great you pizzerias. Know, it's not in the restaurant guide. You're not, you're not finding those bite values. It's all the mom and pops that are around here. Absolutely. Because here in the Rockways, it's like, you don't have far to go. Because there are a lot of great, several great places I want to try that I haven't tried yet, but I'm going to go for it. No, I love that. I love that outlook. So, Pedro, talk about that with, uh, you know, your your day after weigh-in. Uh, like, do you, I'll, I'll let you know about me. Like, you know, I've, I've been down to goal twice and getting back down to the third time now. But um, I always found from before, you know, I was kind of the same thing. I weighed in on Fridays and my, you know, I would call it my off day was Sundays. And, uh, you know, I would treat myself. I'd go get pizza. I would, you know, kind of didn't track, didn't open up the app, you know, just kind of gave my head a breather. And then I just stayed within my daily bites throughout the week. You know what I mean? Yes. How, how is your journey? How is, how, how has your journey been from the beginning as far as to, you know, tracking wise? You know what I, I mean? Like, are you a, do you track everything or do you give yourself grace sometimes? I, I try to be as honest as possible when I track. For me, meal prepping helps because the moment I get on the train to go to work, it's like I'm tracking everything that I'm going to eat the very day. It's like well, I have my, I already have my breakfast. I track that. Then I track what I'm bringing with me to lunch and what I'm going to bring the snack on. And then I'll maybe sometimes I'll plan it, plan it out right away what I'm going to eat for dinner, but I don't worry about that till I get home until I find out how many <laughs> bites I left. I have left, even if I go over them. So. Yeah. So I got a question for you, Pedro. Sure. Out of, you've been doing it for 15 years. 15 yes, years. So we have our uh, Conquer Cravings plan, which was the calories, fat, and fiber. And then we have Carb Conscience, which is. Um, you know, the carbs, protein, fiber, and fat. And then you're on Sugar Smart. I know you're on Sugar yes. Smart now, but out of all of our plans, what was in your 15 years, what was your favorite plan to be on? I think it is the Sugar Smart. Because for me, I have a sweet tooth. My uh -huh. Sweets are my big issue. But I don't have any issues with, I tend to, I personally don't think I have any issues with carbs or meat, but sugar, forget it. It's like, I can go for the donut. If I see a donut, I may want to grab it. If I, I used to crave a lot of candy bars and, and mm -hmm. anything that's high in sugar. So those are my weakness, sort of. So I. So my question is, so my question is for Sugar Smart, you know, you utilize zero, zero bite foods, but you know, the, the sugary stuff is higher penalized. How do you make it work in your lifestyle? Like, to, you know, I get a lot of members that are like, oh, I'm just not eating enough on sugar smart because, you know, this is so many bites, you know, I have something for here that's two or three bites, but then I have this is like 15. If I eat one of those, then it's, you know, a third of my bites for the day. How do you make that work for you, Pedro? If that, for me, Jordan, if something like that happens, I just get back on track the next meal. Because for me, I have, I have moments where I slip, slip up. I go over my weeklies from time to time. Because there are some things I like to enjoy were a lot higher in bites than I originally thought, and but I do, I do choose to enjoy it no matter what happens. So I'm, and I do incorporate a lot of the zeros, but I try not to act as if they are free or they are unlimited. Because I made that mistake yeah. from time to time. Oh, I bet, I bet. So what's a normal day for you look like, Pedro, on Sugar Smart? For me, for me, I don't have a lot of time to cook in the morning, so I'll just do cereal and with two teaspoons of oil and a sliced banana, and I'll have a Greek yogurt on top of it. Then I'll take a fresh, another fresh fruit with me as a snack, and they got fresh fruits at the office from time to time. I'll go for those, and I'll snack on mm -hmm. a string cheese, 
or a laughing cow cheese, anything that's one or two bites for those. And then I'll plan and I'll take my lunch with me, which is usually chicken or pork and then cooked with brown rice or whole wheat pasta. And I use the um, spinach and kale mix. So that's what I meal oh. prep every with every week. What I meal yeah. prep is to take to work so I can steer clear of food trucks and things that I believe are gonna derail my efforts. Oh, I couldn't even imagine being where you are and seeing the food trucks outside. I. Uh... No, like I said, in your area, your neck of the woods, it's a lot of, it, it's foodie central. That, that yes. I, I, I give you so much credit, Pedro, that nice. you deal with, that you Oof. do with, you do that because I know people have been posting photos on Instagram and I'm like, oh man, you got that type of food truck in your area. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what do you think is your overall, I guess with it all, I, you've been doing it so long for 15 years, you know, like I said before, we get a lot of our members that are like, the main goal is to get healthy, but then they, they've they learned the tools to then they can live a life of kind of like food freedom. You know what I mean? You, you hear that a lot. Yes. How are you with, with the 15 years you've been doing this with tracking your food? I mean, what is your end goal through it all? You know what I mean? Uh, once you reach 215 pounds again or whatever it's going to be, what is your long-term forever goal with all this experience that you got for 15 years to never give up that's why i say don't um, as long as you don't give up and you keep it moving you can do this for the rest of your life you just got to keep going keep at it you know there you're gonna have you good know, weeks you're gonna have bad weeks and and i've been through it all good bad in between and what have you but i keep it moving no matter what I the scale that. says especially especially since the scale has not been my friend throughout the pandemic. But at the recent <laughs> talks with my doctors, I'm, I've been limiting on certain things and I'm starting to see success again. Awesome. Awesome. Speaking of doctors, you know, I'm going to push back a little bit on, you know, 15 years ago, you had said you were trying to, you thought about getting the gastric bypass surgery and you're like, Nope, I'm going to try it on my own. You know, last night at our first member uh, member meeting, I think it was, his name is Russ or Ross. I can't remember what his name, uh, Russ or Ross. Um, he had mentioned that, you know, the doctor was wanting to put him on this medication, but he said, let me try it. Let me, let me try to fix it with food. Let me try to fix it with, you know, losing some weight. And the doctor's like, okay, it'll be three months. And he's lost five pounds already for you. When you started 15 years ago with the high weight that you were at six foot, mm -hmm. 34 years old, what did the doctor think when you started showing success and you just kept going, you know? Well, I do, I do remember he was impressed, although my doctors have changed by that. By the time I was losing weight, my doctor at my then hospital, Brookdale in Brooklyn, had changed at that point. So, but he was, he was very impressed with my weight loss success. And, and as long, and he was like, he was, I cannot remember exactly what he, rec I do remember he was proud of me and I know my, everyone I met at my then gym were very impressed by my weight loss success. So some oh, of them were I coming bet. to the, coming to the WWE meeting at that time, my then weight loss program at the time. And there were, and I was sure my stories with them whenever possible. So, so now shooting all the way back to now the 2021, my dot, I keep my doctor up to speed on whatever questions I may have concerning keeping this going. Because even after all these years, we long time, we long time, let me start again. I've been doing this a long time, but I still need the support from the community because I never know yeah. when I'm going to derail. When I'm, when I'm, I never know when I'm going to have an off day, when I never know I'm going to have a bad day. And then challenges can show up unexpectedly, but I keep it moving. I love that. I love the attitude that you have, Pedro. And I right. love that you, you know, you've been, you've been posting in our community on iTrack Bites on the app. You're, you know, posting things on Coach Ben's Facebook page, our Facebook pages. I mean, there's so much that you post that inspires so many of our members that you should be proud because the fact that you have lost, you know, 190 something pounds at one time you were in the 200, lost in the 200s. 
And it's just like, you're, you're maintaining it. You're still doing it 15 years later. You know, it's not something that like, oh, I've maintained for a year, which yes, if you maintain for a year, absolutely, you're doing amazing. But like, for you to have done this for 15 years and maintain majority of it, mm -hmm. that is like the best thing ever. Because I was talking to my wife last night, you know, we were, we were at dinner and you know, we, we've talked about the successes we've had with weight loss, you know, in the past and being like, man, you know, we thought we were strong enough to stop tracking. I guess that's the biggest thing. I'm not somebody that's going to tell you to track for the rest of your life. But if you feel like that's what you have to do to be sustainable, then do it. You know what I mean? Do yeah. it. Do whatever you got to do to keep your train moving. Just like what you said, Pedro. Keep it moving. Keep it going. Because if you stop, you're only going to mess up yourself if you stop. That's, that I agree with. And I got to tell you, that, that I had that fear. When during the pandemic, I had that fear that all, that all the weight I was going to, I lost was going to come back up. I was like, I kept going. And and I enjoyed some foods. I'm not. I don't even like to say I'm not supposed to be eating. But uh, now some. I'm bringing back some foods that I that 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 have helped me with my success. I'm gonna get quinoa this weekend. I'm gonna cook that. I haven't had that in years. Uh -huh. So, I'm, and I'm gonna. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, inter I'm doing my own ver with the air fryer. I do my own versions of fast food at home, and it's much more yeah. enjoyable. Oh, yeah. And you can track it, too. You can make sure that you got the calories in check, the, you know, fats and fiber, everything. I love that. I think the calories is a big part of the I Try Bites app. Is a, for me, it's been yeah. a big game, game changer because I see how many oh, calories I'm eating throughout the day. Yeah. And I technically you don't know, eat all of them. <laughs> no, I get you. Especially when you're talking about the zero bites, you know, it's not, it doesn't mean zero calories. So once you add in that cup of grapes for 100 calories and, you know, all right. that other stuff, it all adds up. It does. It does. Pedro, I'm going to ask you two questions before we get off here because this has been an amazing interview. You have inspired – you've inspired me. I, I get so, – like I, I tell people every single week, when, when someone asks me what is my favorite part about working for iTruck Bites, it's being able to do these meetings because I've been an avid iTruck Bites user since 2018. So it's, it's amazing. That was even before myself starting to work for the company. You know, I was just like you, just like anybody else mm -hmm. on a health and wellness journey, tracking my food, losing that weight, you know, having the time of my life. And now I get to listen to other people's stories and it just inspires me that just keep going. I love that Pedro. And I love your outtake on everything. Jordan, thank um, you. And let me just say, so, I think I'm enjoying the journey a lot more now than than a couple of years ago. But of course, life is gonna happen. Life is gonna yeah. happen. You're gonna have your dark days. You're gonna have your up days. You're gonna have your down days, even moments. But you know, I just needed my health and wellness journey was help. What helped me keep it moving? I was like, I, yeah, I'm this no. hard to give up now. Yes, you didn't go this far to give up now. I love that outcome. So we have so many people. So what is something, we have so many people that listen to this uh, on the podcast, on the live right now, but what is something that you now, 15 years later, 15 years ago, what, what is it that you wish that somebody would have told you 15 years ago when you started that you know now? There's something you know now that you're like, man, I wish I would have knew that, knew that or realized that 15 years ago when I first started. That you didn't have to be too thin to be healthy. Love that. I take that cue from my then gym because I met so many folks and some of them were very skinny. Some of them were very fit. And I was like, this is where I want to be. And I was, and I remember spinning into um, skinny tight jeans at one time. But now I look at all that later and I was like, huh? Oh my, I didn't need it to be that skinny now. <laughs> but I look at those no. days from, just to get good laughs. But there oh, were yeah. memorable moments. I, I like that you said that though, because especially think about it, you know, in the 180s, you were there at one time. Mm -hmm. Your doctor's telling you he looks at your numbers and healthy for your body mm -hmm. is in the 215s. Yes, my current doctor. That is. That's almost 30 something. That's 
25, 30 pounds mm -hmm. heavier than your lowest weight ever. Yes. That you, that you try getting to. Believe it or not, I was, I read that somewhere that my healthy weight was supposed to be 183, but I knew that that was a number I was never going to reach. And I was like, I didn't yeah. feel the need to. I didn't feel the need yeah. to. Yeah. You know, and just listening to you and watching you right now for me, I'm 31, but when I was successful in my first weight loss journey, I or my the the first time I got to goal, I was 26 years old. Right. I just had we just had my daughter, and I lost I lost 45 pounds in four months. Wonderful. But I was not mentally there to keep going. Life got in the way. And I thought I could sustain it and I did it. And Same now, you know, I always tell people, but I was 220 pounds. Cause see, like, you know, they tried to, I'm five foot 11. So per, almost six foot. And they tried telling me the same thing, 175, 180. And when I got in the 220s, I was like, my God, I am the best shape I've ever been in my life. And I lo personally love the way I look in the mirror. And I did. I made that goal for myself. And slowly but surely, I'm getting back down to that number because that was my number. And it's good to know for you at six foot that your doctor's telling you, you know what, Pedro, 215. Get in the 215s and, and your blood work's going to be good. Because I wish, I because that's the one thing. When I get back down to the 220s, I'm getting my blood work redone because I want to know exactly what my doctor thinks. And I do my blood you work know. every year. Love it. Love it, Pedro. So the last question I'll ask you before we hop off here. Sure. Um, you know, we've had so many people watch this tonight. We're going to have thousands. And when I tell you thousands, thousands of people listening to this on the podcast um, and watching it on replay and all that. By the way, if you're watching this on replay, hashtag replay in the comments. Um, but there's going to be that one person that has listened to your journey, Pedro, and was like, man, I can do this. I need to do this. What do you want to tell that person to get them to do it? What is something, what do you want to tell that person that is what, you know, the Pedro 15 years ago that was wanting to get started, what would you tell the individual tonight that is wanting to get started? I say, have a nice conversation with yourself, which is what I did. And then ask yourself, why do you want to do this? And why do you choose to do this? Why, why do you want to, do you, why do you want to be healthier, but why do you want to do it? Do you want to be healthy for just a just an, uh, an occasion? Do you want to lose weight for just an occasion? Or you, do you want to, ch do you choose to do this for life? And lifestyle change. Just like last night's member meeting, diet versus lifestyle that Coach Ben said. You know, the fad diets to get you in that wedding dress or to get you looking good for that, you know, your, the date you're going on or uh, Labor Day weekend that's coming up. Or in you your know, or that's all the four letter beach. word that, yeah. Or is it is it life? Is it lifestyle? Are, are you trying to be healthy? Yes. Do you? Uh, why do you do you want to change your life? What changes do you need to start making? And just do it one baby step at a time. Don't overwhelm it. yourself. Don't don't try to do everything at once. To me, it's still it's still that way today. I still take it one day by day. I never know what challenges are going to be happening. But as long as I do it day by day, just one step at a time, and I'm no longer pressuring myself to get to 215 or even my pre-pandemic weight of two, 203. I just want to enjoy the journey yeah. and keep, keep going. And as long as I keep doing what I've been doing the past 15 years, maybe enhance it a little bit or do a little tweaks here and there whenever I need to, I will get there. I love return, it. Done love it, it once and returned to go twice. Love it. Thank you, Pedro, for joining me tonight. No this problem, great. Jordan. Absolutely. I'm so glad to be able to call you friend, Pedro. And uh, thank you for joining the Nitro Bites family. And thank you for being that, you know, that testimony to people that you can get it done. You can get it done. Thanks for having me. I'm, it's been an honor sharing my story. And I hope I can share it again, again soon. Yes, definitely. All right, Pedro, you take care.